Um, my name is Jen Owen, and I am um, one of the co-founders of Enable, which is a um, global community of volunteers who are making free 3D printed prosthetics um, for people all over the world. Um, quite a lot of them are children. Most of them are children. Um, and we are um, just a group of basic people, um, you know, tinkerers, students, teachers, engineers, um, jewelers, artists, dancers, um, puppeteers. Um, they've all just come together over the last few years to work together and collaborate to make free open source designs for people um, who need prosthetics and have no other option. Um, a little bit of a backstory. Um, Enable kind of started with a stranger who reached out to another stranger and one stranger gave the other guy the finger. Um, after working together for over a year, um, collaboratively from 10,000 miles apart. So they had been working together on this metal design, one finger. Um, I had started blogging about it and sharing about it um, as they were progressing. And after a little bit, um, they were, the, one of the strangers was in the US and one was in South Africa. And so they were getting ready to come together. And just about that time, um, a mother of a five-year-old little boy named Liam in South Africa found out that they had been working on this design for one finger. And he was born missing all of his fingers on his right hand. And she reached out to us through Facebook to find out if they would be interested in helping to make a full set of fingers instead of just the one. Um, so they decided that they were going to help him. And they collaborated and built him a functional prototype that he was able to use. And it was made out of rivets and aluminum bar stock, um, some thermoplastic, some fishing line. Um, and it had four fingers but no thumb. But for the first time in his life, he was able to pick something up. Um, it worked by strapping it to his arm. And when he bent his wrist, it forced the fingers closed. Um, after the first design was created for him, um, they realized that he was going to outgrow that thing within six months or so. Um, and it had taken them a good you know, 24, 30 hours of build time. So they wanted to come up with a design that could be created easily and quickly. Um, so at that time, it was right when um, MakerBot was just getting started out there, really getting their name out there. But it was also at the same time that 3D printed guns were happening. So we took advantage of that and reached out to MakerBot and, and asked them, you know, would you like some good PR for 3D printing? Because there's this kid in South Africa, and we want to build him a prosthetic hand with a 3D printer. But we don't have any. Would you give us two? Um, and they said yes. Um, so they gave us a 3D printer, and they gave um, the other guy in South Africa a 3D printer. And so um, the designer here in the US was able to design it, email the file, and they would print it out in South Africa, and Liam would try them out. In January of 2013, um, after going back and forth for, year, for, for weeks, um, they were able to come up with a really good, robust base design for him. Um, he would test it out, send us videos. He was um, five years old, and he would honestly tell you if what they had made had sucked. Um, and that was the best feedback we could possibly get. Um, this hurts. That doesn't work. I can't pick up my ball. Um, make this better, guys. You're the adults. Um, <laughs> So they gave it out, and um, he was able to you know, ride his bike, hold a pop can, play um, tennis, play cricket. Um, he was using that thing all over the place. Um, after we had um, started working with Liam, we started doing research because we, we, we didn't know how he had lost his fingers until his mom educated us. Um, there's this um, condition called amniotic band syndrome where when the, the 
the child is growing inside the mother, sometimes there's bands from the, the uterus that reach around and kind of grab um, your fingers or your toes or your arms, um, kind of like when you're um, sleeping and you wake up and your toe is on fire because your sock string has wrapped around your, your toe and it's cutting off the circulation. That's what happens with amniotic band syndrome. So he would have been born with all five fingers, but in his case, and one in 1,200 children um, in the U.S. alone, um, they, they end up with missing fingers and hands. Um, we realized that there were thousands of children all over the world, not just who had this condition, but who also were um, harmed in wars, lost limbs from meningitis and illnesses and accidents. Um, so instead of keeping the design and patenting it, um, we collectively decided to um, give it as an open source design, um, open to the general public. And the, the first design was created by a puppeteer and a carpenter. Neither of them had engineering experience whatsoever. Um, and so they knew that since this was working for Liam, they knew that there were thousands of people out there who had access to 3D printers who could maybe take the design and make it even better. So sharing it open source, they basically said, here, take this, make it better. Let's see how many people we can help. Um, after about four or five months after the media had picked up um, Liam's story and the video that MakerBot had made, um, a, a global community was formed in a Google Plus group um, where uh, we had a map and we, you know, there was out there to say, you know, you've got a 3D printer, we've got kids who need hands, if you want to help make a difference with your 3D printer instead of making more Yoda head planters, um, why don't you put your name and your pin on this map and then recipients can find you and you can match up and um, the community started growing and I think we had about 70 people um, in the beginning um, and they started, people started finding us and the community started making hands. Um, we started, you can see that the designs increased in robustness and um, got, got much better within just a year. Um, after a year or so, the kids started requesting themed hands. They wanted to be superheroes. Um, they were putting in lasers in the fingertips to, to tease the cat. Um, slingshot hands were being created, fidget spinners. Um, it was getting pretty creative. And this was from, a lot of this was from feedback from the kids. And um, they had grown up without any fingers, so why not make it super cool? Um, we actually had a Marvel Universe Live event where they were able to pair up with some actors and make a couple of hands. And that kind of really shot out the, ooh, we've got superhero hands to offer you. Um, thing and the, the recipients started pouring in. Um, but while we had um, a lot of kids in South America and the U.S. who were really interested in having the flashy, bright, colorful hands, um, we started getting feedback from chapters in places where um, having something strapped to your body that draws attention to your limb difference is actually um, more harmful. Um, they would rather blend in and um, not draw attention to their limb difference. Um, there's some places where if you have a limb difference, um, you're not allowed to go to school, ever. Like you are, you're banished to a, a limb difference camp. Um, you, you, you can't work, you're, your whole family is relying on you. Um, fitting in is what they needed. And so um, collectively as a community, um, we worked with Jeremy at 3D Universe to um, kind of pull the community and find out, um, I think he put together some, some sheets with different colors and we all kind of just 
decided on four, four main colors um, that would hopefully work the best. So we started um, being able to help the people that really needed it and weren't just looking for a superhero hand to wear to school, but something that they could actually provide their family for with. Places like Sierra Leone. Um, the recipients after a while started giving us feedback. At first they were just really grateful to have something at all. Um, and then they started um, taking um, our requests for feedback. How do we make this better? We don't, don't want to just make it flashy for you. We want it to actually function and give you some kind of ability to grasp things. Um, and we started getting some interesting feedback from the kids. Go figure. So this is Luke. Luke was born missing fingers. He wanted to know why he only had to have two, one thumb. Why can't I have two thumbs? <laughs> You've got a 3D printer. Make it happen. Um, this claw design here, he actually designed that himself on a napkin at a Johns Hopkins um, Prosthetist Meets Printers um, conference where he had been helping. He was teaching other kids how to build their own enable hands. And he took two and went, oh, this is like the claw in that machine. I could do so many things. <laughs> um, so he designed his claw hand. Um, and then he started, he started saying things like, you know, this hand is cool and all, but it doesn't hold my soda. Or if it does, I have to keep my wrist bent so I can hold my soda. Um, could you make me a soda pop holder? Um, I want to play Uno with my brother, and he's got two fully functional hands, and I don't. How do I hold my cards? Um, and then, of course, he just wanted a Lego adapter so he could make a sword. Um, the community really started picking up on that. Um, we had, you know, requests for um, violin bow holders, um, guitar pick holders. Um, Bicycle attachments, um, something that they didn't have to wear all day because they really just wanted to use it to ride their bike. So instead of wearing it all day, we, the community rallied around and started building things that could just attach directly to their, their bicycles that would you know, come off if they, if they fell over. Um, s sometimes there's hand shapes that do not fit the, enable, um, the basic enable hand design. And we have to get creative. And so this person, um, they were tasked with having to try to figure out how to lift weights to improve the muscles in their arms so that they could, because um, it, it was starting to atrophy. Um, so it, uh, one of our volunteers designed this um, barbell holder. Um, jump roping is a huge request for these kids. You know, they, they tend to like duct tape the other handle to their arm. Um, it's really difficult for them when they're in um, PE to not be able to participate. Um, so uh, we've, design, uh, we've got volunteers who have designed jump rope holders and it turns out it can hold brooms and um, golf clubs and um, sticks poking things with. Um, um, and then they started giving us more feedback. We don't want these things on our arms all the time. How about you make something that we just wrap around our fork and leave it, and, and we just put our hand in it when we want it. Um, so after, after the first two years of all this feedback, um, I really wanted to see what would happen um, if we gave them other challenges. We were, we were known as Enable um, making free 3D printed prosthetic hands, but Enable is so much more than that. Enable is a movement. It's about helping people um, using your ideas and your imaginations and your technology and your resources to come up with solutions to help other people. So I um, collaborated with um, Mara at Matter Hackers, and um, we were talking about um, how, you know, there's there's a lot of people who have strokes 
There's a lot of people who have their hands but have lost function due to illnesses or um, nerve damage or, or arthritis. Um, and so we design, we came up with a contest um, a couple years ago, I think it's two years ago, um, called Within Reach. And we had, we, we put out there, hey, we've got all these people who need help um, with daily tasks. How are you going to design for them? Um, they don't want the, the 3D printed hand, that's not gonna work for them. So we put it out there and we actually got um, quite a few um, entries from um, under 18 who designed things like the yellow thing is, you know, you open your, your lid, your grandpa can't grab the, the edge anymore. Um, that's a card holder so that um, Mara's friend could get her credit card in and out of the, to, to pay for gas. Um, and various other things that um, if you go to, to the website and you type in within reach challenge, um, you'll see uh, over 100 designs that were created. Um, raise your hand if you know what Texas looks like on a map. That's what it looks like, just in, in case you didn't know. <laughs> raise your hand if you know what a platypus looks like. Yeah, he's cool. Raise your hand if you know what the constellation the Big Dipper looks like. Well, globally, it is estimated that approximately 1.3 billion people live with some form of vision impairment, and approximately 188.5 million people have mild vision impairment, and there are quite a few people who do not have the privilege of knowing what a platypus looks like or staring at the sky and seeing the Big Dipper. But with 3D printing, um, you can 3D print something and with, with really good detail and you can put it in a visually impaired person's hand and they will now know <laughs> what a platypus looks like. Um, they will now know what Texas looks like. Um, and I um, partnered up with Matter Hackers again and we did another challenge and we asked the, the, the global community to create um, tactile learning tools that teachers could print out um, right there in the classroom. So if they're giving a talk on you know, the stars, their visually impaired student can feel what Orion looks like in the sky. And these are some of the designs that the, the participants came up with. Um, just basic things that we take for granted. Raise your hand if you can solve a Rubik's Cube with your eyes closed. <laughs> well, now you can. If you, if you, if you know Braille, um, because of this design challenge that we did, um, somebody came up with um, a Braille version of the Rubik's Cube. So now um, visually impaired people can probably outdo you. <laughs> This is one of my favorite quotes. Educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Um, the Enable Project has been incorporated into STEM classes all over the world. In tw early 2014, um, teachers really started incorporating Enable into their classrooms and their STEM curriculums. Um, and students were able to see how STEM could solve real world problems. Um, we had, I, I was getting emails from teachers who had students who were, you know, they hated math. You couldn't get the kid to do anything. Um, and now they're the kid after having Enable in the classroom and finding out that math actually is useful for taking measurements and helping somebody else. They're the ones that they are there asking to start an Enable chapter and being interested in STEM. Um, the Enable Project is teaching kindness and empathy. Um, if you uh, go on Twitter and you check the hashtag 
or the Enable the Future <coughs> um, tag, you'll see dozens and dozens of um, teachers and educators who are <coughs> tweeting about how impactful this project is, is for their students. Enable is teaching students that they have the power to solve real world problems with their ideas and their imaginations. Um, there are some schools who have been bringing Enable into their classrooms for the last three or four years, some longer. Um, they're tweeting about how it's giving their, their students real citizen science workshops, um, giving them uh, examples of how they can use technology not just for making things for themselves or to sell at a garage sale to make some money for a new video game, but to, to think outside the box and make designs that can help people. Um, it's really cool to see news articles with quotes from the kids where they are talking about how they never imagined that they would be able to help somebody at school or outside of school, through school. And it's not only changing the lives of the recipients, but the students who are participating are being impacted. Um, we've got some, some high school students who are, um, you know, they're, they're going on into changing their, their idea of what they want to be when they grow up. Um, it's been really really incredible to watch. And Enable is helping to inspire the next generation of change makers. This is probably one of my favorite tweets. After a video about 3D printed hands by Enable the Future, one fourth grader, I don't want to be an NBA player anymore. I want to be an engineer. <laughs> and now the students are becoming teachers. Um, this classroom um, got tired of making, just assembling hands and giving them to give to recipients. They wanted to figure out how else they could change um, other people's lives. So they started um, reaching out to their retirement center and they took their 3D printer and their students to the retirement center and sat down with the elderly patients there and asked them, what do you need? What can we make for you that will make your um, life easier here? And they taught them about 3D printing. They taught them Tinkercad. Um, you know, in a retirement center, you have, re you have retired architects and engineers and tradesmen who are just sitting there doing crossword puzzles. And they are so bored. And having new technology brought into their space and getting their minds going and creating again is just an incredible, impactful thing. Um, they, they designed them some. 3D printed bingo chips that were easier to pick up, um, things to hold their cell phones up so that they could FaceTime their grandkids. And after the first school did it, now there's more schools doing this and they're reaching out into their communities and not just making real life solutions for real life people, but they're making friends and there's, they're um, bridging that gap between the, the young makers and the, and the the mentors. Recipients are also becoming teachers. Um, this is Aaron. He um, is limb different and he helped to design um, his, his prosthetic arm. Then he turned around and started a program at his school where he was collecting um, plastic cups to recycle into filament to make into hands. Then he started a nonprofit. Um, and now he's going out and teaching at schools about 3D printing and how to change the world with your ideas. This is Cameron. Um, he was gifted a 3D printed hand when he was five by two middle school girls who went in on their own time to design and create this for him. As you can see, Cameron likes his hand a lot. Um, after a little bit, he got tired of just wearing his hand and he has a lot of friends who are limb different too. So he wanted to get his own printer and started making um, devices for other children like himself. He got a little bored with that. So he started um, 
3D printing and um, designing new tools, getting feedback from his friends and himself as to what could, could be made better and what would work for them. And now Cameron is out there, not just a volunteer and, and a designer, but now he's a teacher. He's teaching other children and he's teaching teachers how to make 3D printed hands. What other ways can STEM students change the world with 3D printing? Lots of ways. Um, you could reach out to your local zoo, your veterinarian office, um, nature preserves, and um, have your students teach designing prosthetics for, for animals. Um, there is a huge need. Um, if you don't have a, a zoo near you, go ahead and go to the dollar store and chop off some tails of some plastic animals and feet and get them um, designing prosthetics in Tinkercad. Um, the impact is the same, even though they're not watching a 3D printed octopus tentacle reach out and grab something, they are realizing that they have the ability to help another living thing. Um, you could um, invite them to help design low-cost 3D printed me medical devices. Um, there's this um, nonprofit called Field Ready, and they they can make um, stethoscopes for a couple cents versus trying to import them to places and pay the taxes and um, the fees and everything. <coughs> Um, you could have them prototyping for 3D printable, affordable housing. There's a, a village of 3D printed houses that were created in Mexico, I believe, um, just recently. There's also this cool new website called Toy Rescue, where they um, rescue broken toys, and instead of sending them to the landfill, they have people take the, the toys and redesign an arm for Barbie. <coughs> I think it's, I believe it's toy-rescue.com if you're interested in that. Um, I am currently working with um, Ultimaker and 3D Universe. Um, we have a STEM challenge going on that I hope all of you who are teachers or who know teachers or who have students or children who know teachers will enter by February 29th. Um, all I'm asking is that um, in order to win a 3D printer for your classroom, that you make a video and you have your students tell me how they would make a difference with 3D printing. That's it. That's all you got to do. You could win a 3D printer for your classroom. Um, we want to encourage them to not just think about making 3D printed hands. We want them to think about other ways that they could make a difference in the world, whether that's um, bingo chips for the elderly or, um, you know, random things for homeless people or whatever, whatever they can think of, bird houses for the little birds that are frozen in Chicago. Um, this quote is really powerful to me. Um, I think that more teachers um, are, are really doing an awesome job of giving kids lessons um, and real world problems to solve. And I think that um, with the Enable community, um, we have been able to give an example of what, what kids can do and hopefully they take that and they, their imagination soar and they figure out how else they can, they can change the world. Um, to date, we have an estimated uh, about 30,000 volunteers all over the world in over 100 countries. We have, I think, 150 um, registered chapters. Um, we have estimated about 10,000 devices have been donated. And we have at least 2,000 schools who are participating. Um, if you are all <coughs> done eating, I would like to give you a challenge. So I'm going to have you take out your cell phones and put them on the table or your lap. And 
you're going to take your hands and you're going to take your thumbs and you're going to put your fingers over like this and you're going to pick up your cell phone and you're going to take a selfie and then you're going to share your selfie on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram with that caption with no fingers. And if you, the first person who does, you get to win this. Take a selfie. And when you're done, raise your raise your fist. All right. Who is artist on there? Yes. Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> All right. That's my talk. Um, Thanks for coming.